uh, his Twitter handle is redacted. Like, literally, that's what it is. It's redacted. It's not, like, blacked out. Redacted. <laughs> Welcome back to Redacted Media, where we bring you the content as long as you mind your business. We're back here with another breakdown of The Wastelands, Stephen King's magnum opus, The Dark Tower, and I am one of your co-hosts, Redacted, or Larmer. And this is. I am Jake, the uh, the fresh pi- fresh faced pube, fresh faced pube. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And before we get started, I'd like you guys to go ahead and like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, hit the bell notifications if you want to be the first ones to watch the episode. Interact with us in a multitude of ways. We're both on Twitter at Mr. Jakey Poo and also at a redacted underscore posts. Follow. Some up. might say too much. On Twitter. Oh, oh, 100 percent Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Tw- but it's fun. So so <laughs> c- you know, come hang out. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's the downfall of society, but I'm here for it. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. But we're there. And uh, also we have a Discord that we've been posting in lately. I actually posted that like three times in the last uh week for our last uh reading just for the spoiler section. Oh things that I'd I'd recognize and kind of seen. And uh lastly, uh you guys are watching on, on a visual platform like youtube you can see i'm wearing headphones i'm trying to fix fucking audio i've been trying i think this is my, my final thing that can just be okay i can monitor it make sure it's, it's sounding all right and we're gonna try to get you go something that sounds good at least so <laughs> so we left off with uh jake loving trains for one. <laughs> oh yeah jake is just a huge fan of trains it's <laughs> it's become my new favorite thing I, the more th- times that I see, anytime he mentions trains in this book, that's all I can fucking think. I just laugh out loud, like, oh my God, he's just this little 11 year old boy obsessed with trains. <laughs> As you do in the 60s. I mean, I imagine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what else do they have? They didn't have Nintendo yet. Like, No, they didn't have nothing. Yeah. It was basically trains and stealing nudie bags from your dad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and Jake is just way too pure and innocent for that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so they left, what was that? What was it? River Crossing? River Crossing, yeah. River Crossing was the name of the town. So they left River Crossing, and they, they kept on moving towards Ludd. And that's where we left we left off last time. So we pick up here, and... Uh, three days later. Oh, was it three days? Yeah. Oh, shit. Magic number. We haven't, had, we haven't had one of those in a while, so I made <laughs> sure to take note of it. Yeah. So uh, what happened after that? Remind me, because it's been a bit since I've read. So they, um, you know, they're... Walking and uh, they see something off in the distance and um, this big metal thing. They're trying to figure out what it is. So they get closer and uh, oh, it's a it's a plane with its wing torn off. Mm-hmm. Um, Roland thinks it's like a dead bird at first. Everybody else is like, no, we recognize this motherfucker. Yeah, this is a a wartime plane. I believe it's a German plane, right? Yeah, it's a. Uh, Jake recognizes it because, of course, he does because he's the perfect little boy who just knows everything. He uh, he's like, "Oh, this is a World War II such and such plane." And I was like, "Of course, you know that, buddy. Of course." I wrote down Jake Hart's trains and planes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and automobiles. Trains, planes, and automobiles. That's Jake's. That's Jake's shit right there. Um, but they uh, they you know go to check it out and they see that like the. Uh, the Nazi symbolism has been like covered up with a symbol of a like a fist holding a lightning bolt. Of course, and um, they find a a corpse in the, uh, you know, in the pilot seat. Like this motherfucker is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, they they talk about how like he must have been had to like squeeze in through the doors, um, and like even though he's just reduced to a, only a skeleton now, they're still like. Damn boy, he thick. <laughs> it's a thick bony boy right there. Yeah. So they then they quote this poem that I don't did Eddie and Susanna recognize this poem or was the Lord Perth Pur- thing just a rolling thing? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I think it's just a rolling thing where he mentions so fell Lord Perth and as he fell like it shook the earth, something like that, right? Yeah. They mentioned that it's kind of like our story of David and Goliath. So. Yeah, and um. They uh they kind of tell Roland about David and Goliath, mm-hmm. and um they kind of like wonder like how could a German Nazi plane be here, mm-hmm. and um 
Yarlan's like, well, do you think your doors were the only ones that have ever happened? Yeah. And um, Eddie kind of theorizes like, oh, well, you know, stuff goes missing in the Bermuda Triangle all the time. How did you feel about that? Because I felt like... I was like, that's a little cheesy, but like, I I kind of love it. Today, it would have been frowned upon if somebody wrote this book today. Yeah. But with this being a 40-year-old book, like, I I can be like, okay, whatever. Yeah, I was like, I was like, that's kind of cheesy and silly, but I like it. Yeah, like, oh, not like, uh, oh, what's the the trope where like, oh, it's always existed. You ever heard of the Chupacabra? That's really the aliens from Signs. Yeah. Oh, my God. Relax. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that, uh... We have more evidence of our world bleeding in, and this is the first time of, like, we don't know, like, Lamerck Industries or whatever the other one, if that might have been bleed in, too. Yeah. But at least it's it's technology from our world that relatively recent in both of yeah. their words. The world would be a Susanna came in 1964, so it would have been, I mean, 20 years before that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but the uh, person in the – pilot seat they they realize is david quick the the bandit thief that people had been talking about kind of like referred to him as icarus before Mm -hmm. um they somehow just know that like oh this is david quick and then they kind of remember like the story about how like he flew and lost a wing so they're like okay that makes sense and they refer to him as a icarus right yeah um the people in river crossing did oh yeah that's what it was that's what they learned about david quick right Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah i forgot where the uh the icarus mentioning was yeah, so they they found this plane and then just kind of whatever, keep going. Like yeah, they're like, okay, well that's neat, but we can't do anything with this. Yeah, it's it's one of the the elements I really liked the first time reading it, and now I'm just like, okay, it was kind of pointless. <laughs> yeah, it does feel a little pointless. Like it it does come back up later. Yeah, but like unless it comes back up in a major way later, it does feel kind of pointless. Yeah, it's and at least it was only one like section, so they didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. And the fact to be pointless, but... they're supposedly on this great road still in my mind, right? Yeah. That this road is still heading due southeast towards Ludd. They just saw this airplane and like well, no one else did. Ed, yeah. Um, <laughs> and Eddie theorizes that like, you know, maybe the guy um, was trying to land it. And so he was trying, he was aiming for the road since it was kind of like a. Um, like a landing like, strip. Like a landing yeah. strip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he thinks like maybe that's why it's so close to the road. Yeah, for sure. So they carry on. They begin to just start to talk, <clears throat> and this is where this yeah this is where Roland ends up like okay we can finally talk. I've held you guys off for so long. We can talk about their experiences, right? Is that this night or is this the next? Um, I'm, when, I'm lost. When they have sorry. the palaver about like all of their basically catching everybody up. Yeah, that was at the end of the last one. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. So the, um so th- what happens next is um when they start talking about. Uh, all of the riddles. That's what it was. Um, and Roland kind of talks about how like they studied riddles in school. Mm-hmm. Um, and in his world, riddles are very serious business. I've definitely quoted this in probably two to three English papers. Yeah, just about like the earliest forms of literature, and like our jokes are riddles con- uh, considered literature. And I just thought like, oh, I remember reading somewhere that back in the day people used to really take riddles seriously. And I know I'm referencing this, but I just make it seem like it's real. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I'm like, eh, you know, what 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 my English teacher doesn't know won't hurt him, you know. Right. And um, they he he kind of you know admits that. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. He he admits that you know he wasn't the, he liked the riddles a lot, but he wasn't the greatest. And he's like, uh, Vinay said it was because I thought too deeply. My father said it was because I had too little imagination. I think they were both right. Yeah. How are you at riddles? Not good. I'm terrible. Yeah. God awful. I will I will walk right past the answer and yep. not think of it. Like I I am not good at. I'm decent on some kind of trivia. I can remember a lot of pop culture items, but like. Actually, using problem solving in a riddle, I can't. I can't fucking do. Yeah, not a chance in hell. Um, I did solve like like the riddle. Um, in this one, um, before like they revealed what it was, the river one. No, the um, we'll come up to it later. But it's okay. it's um, it's the one about the shadow. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, or it's short in the morning, tall in the evening, disappears at night, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, I know this one. I didn't know it, but I was like, oh, I think I know what it is. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, and then 
he he talks about how Court actually like stabbed a person over a riddle. Yeah, and that made me think of you know earlier in the book we were talking about. Um, you know, Jake was learning about like Samson and Delilah. Um, El Samson killed some dudes over over the riddle. Yeah, I was like, oh, it was Court Samson. <laughs> Ooh. Probably not. But Probably not. <laughs> there's some parallels there. Yeah, for and, sure. And um, that's when Jake pulls out the riddle book, and he's like, "Yeah, this is the book that Calvin Tower gave me." And I guess he f- just forgot to mention that part during the palaver because Roland freaks out. He's like, "Calvin, who?" <laughs> like, <laughs> like he like grabs Jake and he's like, like his eyes get all big and he's like, "Who? What was his name? What? What could that? Okay." <laughs> I get Roland's obsessed. I get what could that have meant? I mean, right. in, in any chat, like, what, what could that have meant? <laughs> it's like, dude, chill. It's just a name. It's just a coincidence, Roland. Yeah. You believe in Ka. Some people are going to be fucking named Tower. You're going to have a shootout at the Leaning Tower. Like, relax, dude. Yep. And um, then Eddie tries to tell a joke as a riddle. And um, oh, Roland gets kind of pissed at that. Because he's like, this is serious. I thought this is foolishness. Funny. I thought the joke was funny. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I'll repeat it, and we'll get demonetized. If somehow we get demonetized in the next three weeks, it was how the dead baby crossed the road. And it's because it was stapled to the chicken. That's, that's definitely an Eddie joke. Yeah, a very Eddie like, joke. I was like, okay. Uh, I, I'm starting to like you more and more, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they uh, they start telling riddles, right? Yeah. And does Eddie even tries to like throw in a couple more <laughs> jokes and just it's not working <laughs> yeah it does not land <laughs> what's the deal with belly bumblers <laughs> Eddie bombing on stage stand up in front of people from Midworld would be amazing <laughs> that would be very good <laughs> alright um, so they start talking about like you know we're getting close to the city uh, those greys and those pubes might be out this far so we should start doing guard watch and uh, Jake's like, oh, well, I can do it. And he's like, no, you're a little kid. You sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, and before they go, they, they say one more riddle. And it's, uh, there is a thing that nothing is, and yet it has a name. It is sometimes tall and sometimes short. Joins our talks, joins our sports, and plays at every game. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah, Shadow. It, yeah. Um, and I was like, they they... Confirm it later in the book because I think uh, they're talking to Blaine or something. Yeah, but uh, that's that's later. Gosh, so I wanted to mention one of Eddie's jokes that flopped <laughs> with the group okay. again because <laughs> I put a star by it. It's so good. They're talking about uh, things that uh, a riddle that's a double, right, or something that's a metaphor. Yeah, and <laughs> Eddie says, "I'm metaphor sex," but she slapped me in the face and walked away when I asked. Eddie told them sadly. They all ignored him. <laughs> <laughs> These are the types of scenes I want to see played out on screen so bad. Yeah. Just to ah. Uh. These kind of moments in my in books are like my favorite. Like just like kind of the downtime talking <laughs> stuff. Yeah. This Nothing's get, happening. But... It's when you get the most like character, um, like character growth or not growth, but like more information about the characters. For sure. For sure. You can like. They get fleshed out. They become more yeah. Humans, there we go. You know, instead of maybe archetypes or just people in a book. Like yeah, when you see what people do when they relax, you gotta <laughs> yeah. like kind of see more of who they are. Yeah. <laughs> they all ignored him. Just yeah. All three of them like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Eddie's the first on guard duty, and um, he is sitting there and he hears the drums start up from the town. Mm-hmm. And now he's he was pretty sure before, but now he like he knows. He's like, "Oh, this is Easy Top's Velcro Fly." I listened to the song and very recognizable drum beat to it. Yeah. So, uh I see how he could recognize that. Yeah, I I went and listened to the song this week too and um I posted it in the Discord. Oh, did you? You don't want to go look, if you don't want to go look for the link yourself. Hell yeah. Look at that. We even got links to music. <laughs> and um I didn't post this one, but um, I did also find on YouTube somebody put like just the drum beat. No shit. Um, and all the comments were like, uh, "We're talking about Dark Tower." So I was That's like, "Oh, scroll back up, scroll, scroll back up." up. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't see any spoilers, but I was like, "I better not go too far down." It's it's crazy the things that if you find that that weird little pocket of Dark Dark Tower fans, they will 
gather there and talk about shit. It's like, oh my god, like you're gonna yeah. spoil the whole fucking series. <laughs> like, and relax. E- <laughs> even in like the official music video that I posted, um, people were still talking a lot about it. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. And then, um, so it skips forward three more days, mm-hmm. um, and they're getting closer and closer to the town. And they kind of find off to the side, like they start hearing this buzzing. And they're like, oh, is that bees? And Roland gets excited because he's like, oh, we can get some honey. Yeah. Like, hell yeah, dude. And uh, so they, they kind of go and like wander off to look for these these bees. And when they find the hive, it is like weird and lumpy and misshapen. And the bees that are flying around it are like gigantic, but they're also like, like almost albino white mm-hmm. and like sickly looking. And so he's just like, actually, no, no, never mind. I'll I'll pass. Yeah, I, I we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll we'll get sick. If we eat yeah, those. mutated honey. I'm cool on. Yeah. yeah, no thanks. Yeah, what a uh, what a fucking buzzkill. But <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is when Eddie starts to um, kind of think about like, oh, there was a nuclear war here. Like everything's radiated and mutated. Like, I think that what happened to this world was nuclear war. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. okay. That's kind of what Put I... Put that down. I mean, if we're... Th- okay, this is in the 80s, so... We're, we're, we're right. We're right right in the, the time of thinking about... You know, there was... What was the game with the computer, with the nuclear... Oh, my God. the eight, War games? War games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the nuclear hype. Like, oh, my God, what happens yeah. if it hits? And we all kind of, you know, go to shit. So that's kind of why I thought since... uh reading this book that it was a nuclear apocalypse because it yeah. was just a, such a lack of civilization and buildings. And I was like, something had to have happened that destroyed not only lives, but infrastructure too, you know? Yeah. And um, it, it's kind of made me think of like the Fallout games a little bit. Oh, oh man. Yeah. I, I can't escape it. Yeah. Like, I can't play Fallout with thinking about, without thinking about this game. Oh, I bet. And I can't read this without thinking about Fallout. I mean, there's there's way too many similarities, and that's where. Could in your through through four and or three and seven eighths of a book, could there be a Dark Tower game? Hmm. There's a lot more that might like be video game easier to replicate in a video game in the next four books. Yeah. But so far, what do you think? So far, I don't see a lot of game to it yet. Yeah. Um. Though, you know, I could see, I I could I can definitely see like the starts of one, like uh, these like small pockets of civilization, and um, I can definitely see Lud being like a very interesting level uh, to go through. If it was a game, would you want it to be open world or linear? Because in fact, the story is very linear, and it kind of needs to be with a beam. Yeah, and. I think it just depends on if in the game it just takes place in Midworld or if we are following Roland's story. Ooh, just like a oh no, it's a anthology game, just like in Midworld. That'd be really fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be really. Cool. I want to go. I mean, even maybe before the fall of Gilead, you know, just like living in that time and having the oh, that would be really cool. The, yeah, the the Battle of Jericho Hill and the, like the Farson and like you could partake as like one of the gunslingers that ends up losing that war. But that'd be a That'd be a fun game that you could really experiment with and get it creative with. Yeah, I, I think that. I think that you probably could. I put just a game want, in this world. I think it's a cool thing to take the the night fantasy element, but throw in revolvers. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's such a cool thing to think about. Like just these little little things of modern technology that exist. Like you said in Fallout, then add in like that element and like castles and shit. That's what I imagine Gilead is in, in my mind. It's basically a fucking stone castle. That's how I always pictured it too. Like when he was talking about it, and I don't, I don't know if that's based on anything. I remember, they might have said something about like stone walls at one time, but Gilead is like a straight up Knights of the Round Table castle. Yeah, and he has courtyards and you know shit out there that I don't know. That's just what I think. But now we're here with like you know Lud is a whole fucking city. that's that's crazy. That yeah, Lud is Lud is New York, <laughs> basically, right? That's what yeah. they're saying. And yeah, so yeah, crazy. And uh, so the next section that we get is, um, you know, they've stopped again for the night. And Eddie asks Roland, like, hey, you know, what is your deal, man? Like, we've been traveling with you for a while. <clears throat> what is your backstory? 
Mm. And Roland's like, you're right. I need to tell you. And I'm going to tell you later. <laughs> yeah, not right now. It was just, kind of, I felt like this, that section was, just, it was a really short little one. And it kind of just felt like Stephen King being like, ah. Yeah. Like on, he's just teasing us a little bit. On my, it's right here to right here. Like that's yeah. the whole section. Like yeah. it's, I mean, half a page. Yeah. But they're talking about it. And it's like, oh, okay. That's a little, uh, uh, little hint for maybe a book to come. Maybe here pretty quickly. We're going to be just talking about Roland's past. So yeah, they uh <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I was looking for my notes in my book and I turned the page and I have a star <laughs> next to a piece of dialogue. All it says is because of the train. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what context this is in. But <laughs> oh yeah. So what it is is um <laughs> uh they eventually do let Jake be on watch and um he he um at one point wakes up roland because he hears fighting in lud um there's there's people with guns he like they hear gunshots Mm -hmm. and um even roland is now kind of like thinking about like oh maybe we should detour around the town and jake's like no we can't because of the train (laughs) we gotta get to the train gotta see that train (laughs) you promised um he is convinced that Blaine will protect them from the wastelands. Um, and so he, he was like, no, we, we have to get to Blaine. Yeah. Um, we can't continue on our quest without Blaine. Which makes me think, like, what, if this is the nuclear world, is that, like, radioactive, like, deposit? Is that, like, maybe where a uh, warhead might have hit that's still yeah, maybe. not being able to be traveled through? Or you ever seen the movie The Mist? No. Okay. Let's talk about it later then. All right. <laughs> If you, um, if you don't know anything about it, I'm not going to bring it up because it's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this made me realize this book is called The Wastelands, mm-hmm. and we're not there yet. No. We have not made it to the fucking Wastelands yet. It, it feels like, you know, it feels like they're going to get on Blaine at the very end of the chapter mm-hmm. and then go to the Wastelands. And I'm like, Steven! Yeah, probably a pretty bad name for this book. He could have picked it. Why, what would you pull it? <laughs> Trains, planes, and automobiles. <laughs> Dark Tower 4. <laughs> the one with the train. <laughs> Just trains in all caps. <laughs> Just trains. <laughs> like four exclamation marks. <laughs> oh, my God. Childish. Yeah. So, <laughs> go ahead. Where were we? Um, and so, um, as they're getting closer to the town, the road is getting worse. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not able to push Suzanne anymore. He, they're having to carry her and just kind of drag the wheelchair behind him. Um, and they notice that like the road is getting narrower and there's like em- embankments like being built up on the, ar- mm-hmm. around the side of the road. And, um, they figure like, oh, this is, you know, kind of built to keep people out. Um, or to at least be able to fight them off when people try to come in. Yeah, I imagine it just like big rises on either side of the road that you can be ambushed from or noticed or not. Oh, you can have the high ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> um, but they are coming up to the bridge now. And um, they actually see a uh, another monorail train collapsed into the river. Yeah, the blue um, one, right? Yep, the blue one. Um, they they know it's not Blaine, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember exactly how, but they, they know that, like, this one's not Blaine. Blaine is still in the city somewhere. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, I think it's Susanna's talking to him. said, yeah, she also said she hadn't heard it in seven or eight years. And Aunt Talitha said it was more like ten. What do you think, Jake? Jake, Earth to Jake. Jake to Jake. Come on. And Jake's just like, uh, Jake paid no attention. He knew what he was seeing. It w- and it wasn't Blaine. Just intuitively, like, nah. Like, that is not my train. Nope, not the right train. See this train? This train is what I want. Charlie the Choo Choo. All right, baby. That train's a garbage train. <laughs> my train's the cool train. Uh, don't want that train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so as they're like walking um, along like, up to the bridge, it is swaying back and forth in the wind, it is falling apart. What kind of bridge is this? I I had a hard time 
visualizing this because I thought maybe it would look like the uh Oh, just like a typical like the fucking Golden Gate Bridge, you know, but a lot. That's kind of what I was thinking too. But it's also swaying, so I don't. I don't, I'm not. I don't really know how bridges work. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I don't know how they support themselves or like what's going on with it. But yeah, uh, just a decrepit bridge is all we really need to know. Yeah. And so they see that there's like a walkway on the side that looks a little bit more secure. Mm-hmm. And um, they're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna take that. Um, and they see a sign up to it that says something about the Lamerck foundry. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, there's that name again. Yeah, Lamerck and Sombra, and there's one more that I, I'm, I'm always forgetting, but yeah. They mentioned it later. I wrote it down. I just don't remember now. Yeah. Um, and this is when we find out that Eddie is scared of heights. Yeah. But he flew. So I, do you have, do you have a fear of heights? I don't know. I don't like falling. I don't like the feeling I get in my stomach, like on roller coasters or whatever it is, yeah. going down like steep hills. I don't like that feeling of losing my stomach. But I can like look out over a drop. It's not going to like, oh, my God, oh, my God. First of all, if you fall, whatever. You got like 10 seconds to be like, damn, this sucks. And then you're <laughs> yep. dead. And it's over with. Yep. You know, it's like, it's, it's got a one to 10 in like worst ways to die. It's like a two. You know, whatever. You fall, you die. It's probably really cool to fall for a little bit. Try to do a flip or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and so they they say that like Roland is gonna carry Susanna, uh Jake's gonna walk in the middle, and then Eddie will carry the wheelchair over. Yeah. And so they start to go, and then we get a whole section that's kind of just like uh being in Eddie's head and like just building tension. Oh. Um just more focused on him being scared in it. There's not a lot to cover recap wise but it was really interesting mm-hmm. yeah they uh they do build some tension here I, f- I forget i thought i might have marked some stuff down but no he's uh he's like third in line isn't he isn't there yep. yeah and so he but he is freaking <laughs> this whole time not having a good time while uh well uh crossing this bridge and they get what is this this hole they're trying to cross like is it like i imagine chunk of bridge had like fallen through and they're walking through like the skeleton like the scaffolding of it yeah so the way i pictured it was like like they were just kind of walking over a thin rail Mm -hmm. um and kind of having to balance on like a beam almost um (laughs) hey hey um but as they're as they're walking across you know roland gets across just fine jake makes it like halfway and then he looks back and he realizes like oh Nobody planned for Oi. Yeah. What is Oi supposed to do? Fuck you doing, Jake. Figure it and out. And so he he turns back to like go after Oi, and then he falls. Yeah. Dumbass dog. Rip. <laughs> yeah. I I I was when I first I was like, are we gonna lose Oi already? Like I wouldn't have surprised me. Like oh yeah. he belongs to this world. You know we're moving into the wastelands. We don't need to bring a creature from midworld in here. You know. But no, he ends up uh biting the shit out of Jake's hand. Yeah, so Jake like dives after him, and uh, <laughs> Oi grabs onto him by biting his hand. Yeah, and um, but Jake is about to fall, and then Eddie kind of goes like Super Saiyan gunslinger mode, has like the cold steel like feeling wash over him. Mm-hmm. It completely stops being scared, and he like jumps down and like grabs Jake and pulls them both back up. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> and then by the time that he he pulls Jake up by his hair, by the way. Yeah. That happens a lot in this. But like, Roland got pulled through the door by his hair. Eddie is just grabbing hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's like his main one. Oh, fuck it. Give me your hair. I got it. <laughs> like, oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Um, Where is this wheelchair during this time? Just in one hand, a wheelchair. One hand, Jake. And he's holding on with, like, his abs. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Yeah. It's one of those things that just, just logistically how? I don't know. It's it's he did King didn't take very good care of like describing this like okay, whenever they were describing the uh the the railroad that fell apart underneath the mountains. I feel like I could visualize that relatively well. It was yeah. just like a bridge that had, you know, planks in between it that it w- it was a railway as as well too, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, and it just it hung out over, and I imagine there's probably some support beams, you know, that held it up or whatever. And I thought I could visualize that relatively well, even though that was in the pitch fucking dark. Here we are in the middle of the day, in the middle, and I can't like mentally picture anything besides like maybe a hole with water underneath and uh, maybe like a a pipe. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. I, I don't know what they're on. I don't know. Like I need to know those surrounding details in the scene. For it to like make sense to me, and I feel like King kind of fell short here. Yeah, I I absolutely did too. I I read it over a couple of times because I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, what exactly is going on here? Yeah, like not knowing where the wheelchair is is, is completely secondary to me. I don't give a fuck. But just yeah. like trying to keep me in the scene, trying to but, actually see the picture. Yeah, I, I I don't have like this extremely vivid imagination. I don't try to like picture characters' faces or like really try to develop. But like whenever it is a moment of high tension and it's characters versus the elements. I kind of need to know what they're up against. You know, right. Just yeah. logistically, you don't need to give me like size or, you know, it's a 15 foot chasm with an 800 foot drop. Da, 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 da. I don't need to know all that. But it would have been nice to have some kind, something to base my imagination in. So, yep. Um, and so once everybody gets settled and, you know, like they're, they get like across the little gap, um, they look over and uh, see some dude dressed up like kind of like a fucked up looking pirate. Yeah. He has like a yellow scarf on. Yeah. Which are you thinking this is like wrapped around his head like a, God, what do you call the people? A turban kind of? Yeah, it's like a turban. That's kind of the way they described it later. Okay. Um, And I thought maybe like, maybe it was like a turban or like kind of like he was wearing like a big headband almost. I, I, I like that. I also want to see him as like Fred from Scooby Doo with just a handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> just like the ascot. Yeah. Hell yeah. But no, this is where the the fallout comparisons get very so it's like, okay, this is a wastelander. Like, yeah. This is somebody that has been surviving and is sick of some kind. Yeah, they Whores Blossom they, just, they call it or something. Yeah, they like describe that. it yeah. as a venereal disease. Yeah. yeah. And he's got like open wounds all over his face and like Ugh. I'm like, is that scarf yellow or is it soaked with pus? Ooh, I didn't even think about that. That's disgusting. That is disgusting, and I'm That's sorry gross. that I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of a bright and like weird thing to see in this world, something yeah. bright yellow. But no, it might just be dingy <laughs> and gross and pussy. Yeah. Um. And they all pull their guns on him, and he's just got like a crossbow. But he tells them, like, oh, you better put those guns down because you're outmatched. And yeah. pulls his other hand out from behind his back. Got a, got a fucking grenade. Just a grenade out of nowhere. Yeah. On, a, on a bridge that's falling apart. Yeah. This is the the absolute madman. And throwing a fucking torch into a pool of gasoline, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, now you no matter... I, I do like that this is an element where a character can beat three people that we've seen have inhuman abilities. I don't think they're necessarily like superheroes by I mean. But Roland is a killing machine and we see that oh, Eddie yeah. and Susanna have these abilities that are defining and 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 growing, right? Mm -hmm. Before we get there though, I did want to say Roland's wearing a hat in this scene. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? So yeah, like Susanna <laughs> mentions it and like puts it back on his head cuz he like got blown by the wind or something. When the fuck did he put on this hat? Right. I think we were talking about it um, like last week or something, yeah. maybe a couple weeks before, about how like sometimes he'll just have a hat and sometimes he won't. I believe in the opening fucking chapter of The Gunslinger, it says he pushes back his hat and wipes some sweat off of his brow. That's the last time I remember hearing from a, of a hat. Yeah. I don't picture rolling with a hat. No, me neither. I picture rolling with about probably like length of hair that you have right now, but like they say he's graying on, along his temples, and he's just... Just a guy, maybe like a, a decent, not beard, but like, you know, scruff on him. Yeah. And I never picture him with a hat, ever. No, absolutely not. After all the times that on the beach, we talked about how jacked up his clothing was, and he still had a fucking hat on? <laughs> <laughs> and like, even the illustrations in the book that I have um, don't show him with a hat. See, but my uh, graphic novels, hat everywhere. Hat everywhere at all times. And he's a duster, too, somehow, but that might just be their, them taking liberties. Yeah. Where... Like, uh, in the movie, they gave Idris Elba a duster. I think he looked like a fucking badass. Oh, yeah, he looked great. I think the move of flipping back the dust duster to draw is so fucking cool in Westerns. Like, yeah. being able to, like, it's like unsheathing your sword, you know? Yeah. Like, making it available. Like, oh, now I'm, it's out, and I can, 
you know. So yeah, uh, but yeah, Hat Watch. I'm back on it. <laughs> <laughs> Hat Watch 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this guy is, um, calls himself Gasher yeah, or the Gasher man, the Gasher man. Um, <clears throat> he also calls what he has a Granado instead of a grenade. Yep. Um, but Gasher, Gasher man kind of talks a little funny. Yeah. He's got the, uh, I don't even know how to say this. Cause like the townsfolk at River Crossing talked a little funny. But yeah. They were kind of just like a, a rural accent maybe i think that where these this guy is did you listen to any of this on audiobook the whole thing okay yeah great 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 voice acting by this guy oh yeah oh he's so good he's so good (laughs) so yeah uh if you again like this could just be a paid ad for downloading the audiobooks of the dark tower they're amazing i love all seven of them but the first four are top tier and it's not close (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so Gasher says that, like, send over the boy, and I won't throw this grenade. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, you'll die, too. He doesn't care. He doesn't Gasher doesn't care. He knows he's got, like, a year left. Yeah, I'm going to die most. anyways, and this will be quicker. Yeah, so, so he, he, like, they, that's how they know that they can't beat him, because he truly does not care if he dies. Yeah. He has nothing to lose, and um, he only cares if he wins. So he, he gets what he wants or he dies. Yeah, and you're that's, only, it's like a sacrificing a moving chest or something like you have to okay in order to complete this i have to i have to you have to take my queen so yep. i'll be back you know but <laughs> there it is and uh so he wants jake he wants mm-hmm. them to send jake over and um surprisingly jake and roland are just like you know they're a little conflicted on it but very shortly they're just like yeah okay yeah um and he's like, I'll come for you. And he's like, I know. Yeah. I was like, aw. Yeah. Fucking better. They, they've they overcame a lot in the maybe month that they've been back together. You know? Yeah. The first set of trip, <laughs> not so great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, ended pretty badly. Jake probably didn't have the greatest time. The yeah. second set, I think he's doing a lot better with old, old Roland DeShane. And uh, so after Jake heads over to Gasher Man... Um, at first, he's he's carrying Oi um, with him, and Gasher makes him drop Oi, mm-hmm. and uh, then Gasher grabs him, basically just takes off running, like, and they run into like a trash labyrinth. And for some reason, I can picture this so much more clearly. They don't. He does no better job explaining this. But now we get on this side of the bridge, and I feel like I can see just like a city skyline. With that. for some reason they went left in my mind. <laughs> I don't know. Just like this scene has always been extremely vivid to me. Yeah, it really. Bridge. And really, like the first part of the bridge was fine too. It's just the gap thing. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah, I didn't. I was walking across a rail. Like, is it a handrail? Is it a guide? Is it a fucking a piece that asphalt has fallen away from? That's where I kind of. Yeah, I don't know. It, we're probably nitpicking here. And yeah, we don't need to be, but. <laughs> But yeah, so he, he runs off with Jake, and Oi takes off, too. Yep. He's gone. See you, see you, Oi. Bye. Go figure it out. Yep. And and Roland suggests, like, no, Eddie and Suzanne, you guys go to the cradle. You guys go find Blaine. Figure this out. I'll go get Oi. Or go get Jake. Yep. I'm really happy they chose to do this, because... Yeah, it was really interesting. It led for a lot quicker pacing of the story because two things were happening at the same time yeah you kind of jump back and forth and sometimes whenever like Roland's story would pick up or jake's would pick up you know eddie and then would kind of be like not as interesting but then they would pick up we'd get some more you know things just kind of slowly happening over here i thought it was it was a really good demonstration of handling three different unique stories you know and how they're intertwining so also before we get there i love that like any time that you can show me something big, like a visual or a sound that is happening in two different timelines, like yeah, them being able to hear the drums at different points, back, like, oh, I know exactly when this is happening. And I can kind of like imagine like a split screen of what happened in Eddie and Susanna's story while I'm reading like Roland's. You know, like, okay, this is probably about the time they shot that little bitch you do. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, yeah, I'm a, I, I don't know. I, I enjoy this section a lot. It was it was really good. Um, 
And Roland's kind of like beating himself up a little bit. He's mad. He's like, I should have seen the Gasher man coming. Yeah. And um, then we hop over to Gasher and Jake, and they are like running through the maze. And like Gasher will kind of like hit him on the shoulder when he wants him to turn. And Gasher is just straight up mean to this kid. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's just beating him up the whole time. Yeah. He's just beating the absolute shit out of Jake and somehow running. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this guy that is close to death and scraping pus out of his eye, just booking it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and um, Jake takes note of some like weird trash that he sees, and like one that I wanted to point out, just because like, um, they made a point to point it out is like he sees this like weird crystal fish with the word delight etched in its side. Hmm, I didn't yeah. notice it, and I was like, I don't know if that's important or not, but uh, I wanted to just write that down because. That feels like a very weird detail to just throw out there. It must be a reference to something that I'm not catching because I don't think it pays off in the book. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know what a crystal fish would delight on. I don't know. Um, And Jake is like right at this point right now, he is kind of convinced that Roland won't be able to find them because of just how labyrinthian this maze is. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, you know, taking constant turns left and right. And, um, and then we get to some booby traps. Um, they, um, like Gasher st- stops them and says like, Hey, there's some wires right there. Crawl under them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they're, they're trip wires that we don't know what they'll cause, but probably like an explosion or some sort of, uh, collapse. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so Jake is scared that Roland is going to fall for those. And not only does Roland have to guess right in this maze. He now has to be aware of booby traps. Yeah. Which I would, wouldn't be surprised if some of these exits and turns in the maze that are wrong just led to instant booby traps where you cannot get through. You enter this part, it's all trapped. You know, you can't slide underneath. You can't. It's not designed for you to get through. It's if you right, enter, like you're, you're done for. It's just a trap. Or it's just like dead a Dead ends with an emphasis. Yeah, emphasis on dead. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It would have been better if I could have actually made that sentence out. Yeah, you, you know, know I'll, I'll edit it in post. <laughs> Um, so now we hop over to Roland going through the maze and he's like, I will never be able to find my way through this. Yeah. And he, he's like, there's absolutely going to be traps in here that I have to watch out for. So he knows. Um, but then boy came, comes up. Ache, 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 ache. <laughs> and, um, I'm, I'm really happy King didn't choose to have like a gunslinger force here that just like drew him to Jake and like they incorporated the use of an animal that has dog like qualities here. Yeah. It's like, okay. Good yeah. Job, I, I, I really like that. It wasn't just like, ah, ca showed him the way. <laughs> yeah. Ka made him, let him know which turns to take. <laughs> the force ghost of court didn't come down and tell him <laughs> which one left or right. No. <laughs> you um, have chosen wisely. <laughs> yeah. So Oi Oi followed Jake and he like, he stayed hidden. Yep. And uh, so Roland is like, oh, this Bumbler is actually pretty smart, and so he asks him for help. Yeah. And always like, ache, ache, and ache, just ache, takes ache. off. Yeah, just God. Like, All right, bet we are now teammates. Let's get it. Both have a common goal. And do we jump back to Eddie and Susanna that yep. quick? Yep. So um, we get a section with them where they are, um, they've kind of been going through the city, and they've come to, like, what Eddie thinks is kind of, was kind of like the, uh, you know, like the well-to-do district. Yeah, um, Fifth Avenue, he calls it. Yeah. yeah. He thought it was kind of like their um, center of, I can't remember exactly how he puts it, but kind of like where their um, community was. Like, this is where people would go for plays, and like this is where all the fancy people would ha- have stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, along the road, they do see a large stone turtle. Yeah, so now they're on like Turtle Avenue or something. Yeah. They call it later, and... Just more, more tur- is that is that iconography? Is that what that that word means? I Maybe like, I, I don't remember. I think it's like whenever something is present, and it could be s- like a symbol. I think it's iconography. That, that sounds I, right. I am an English major, but don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the turtle things keep on popping up, and first of all, tur- turtles as like a mythic creature is so fucking cool to me, and I don't know why. Is like because like turtles can't be bad. Like you can't make a bad turtle. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're not necessarily like cute or like cool. Like they have a shell that's fucking awesome. But like even in uh in Elden Scrolls, there's this 
turtle priest that like teaches you spells. The turtle poop? He's fucking amazing. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love him. I don't know anything about that game really except for turtle poop. <laughs> turtle poop is amazing. He's great. He's just a bit giant fucking turtle that teaches you spells. That's, that's all he does. It's his only use in the game. But he's fucking iconic. <laughs> And that's awesome. I was like, oh, Matron, definitely. And I did see something online like you could like disappoint him or something if you like you kill like the little turtles you find throughout the game. Oh yeah, like he'll know. Yeah, he doesn't. And, and he'll get disappointed in you. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to let down Turtle Poop. <laughs> the game's so great. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so turtle include more turtles in your fantasy. Yeah. Like we're, I'm tired of seeing like you know the bear spirit, the wolf spirit, tiger, and whatever hawk. Turtles, <laughs> Discworld. <laughs> um, so they um they see like speakers um on poles and like also bodies hanging from like everywhere basically. Big 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 Fallout vision yeah. for me of like you you ever play uh New Vegas? Yeah, oh, that's see- the best one I think. I disagree. Yeah, I'm taking Fallout Three in a head to head. It was my first one. And I played that game. I don't. I didn't like New Vegas as much as everybody else did. Yeah. I think I played straight forward, just like with the NCR, right away, and didn't explore later, laterally while I was playing. And I never went back and like enjoyed it whenever the graphics weren't terrible. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> now I get back there and I'm like, okay, I'll try to play it through again. I'm like, eh, I don't really feel like just going through shit and exploring in a game that's 12 years old. But anyways, uh, in New Vegas, they have the. The sh- oh surely the lottery it's a it's a fucking short story oh my god what's her name it's like a ve- okay it's it's based on a short story by somebody named Shirley something and basically they have a drawing of somebody's like ID and that's the person they killed that year okay and they in New Vegas it's they hand out lottery tickets but everything is winning numbers and the winning prize is you get crucified <laughs> it's fucked up <laughs> shit. <laughs> And that's what this reminded me of. There's like this, all these telephone poles in this town in uh in New Vegas, and there's like this people crucified everywhere, and like in each one of their pockets is like winning lotto number. It's fucking crazy. Damn, it's super messed up. Um, but Su- ha- Susanna has like another like flashback, and she just um, knows that these were like a wartime measure to make announcements across the city so that you know everybody would be on the same page. Um. And she also knows that this is where the drums are coming from, are from mm-hmm. these speakers. Mm-hmm. So something in town is playing this drum solo. Yeah, that there's something that is being broadcasted throughout the town, probably from a remote location. Yep. And that this was a wartime measure. What a... The fact that she is so familiar with that is absolutely terrifying. She grew up, you know, in the time of hide under your desk for nuclear bombs, you know? Yeah. And that then she was dealing with... Uh, Shit, JFK in Cuba before she came over. So she's more nuclear scares, you know. Than, yeah. And so she's used to this. And I do like how they kind of flash back and, like, Susanna is almost able to hear it. Like, while she was – I think they even have, like, a, an instance yeah, in here. Yeah, it, it's kind of like when she had that flashback in River Crossing where, it's like, she could see the city. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, something's going on with Susanna. I don't know if – that's a really cool like trait to give her that I think is I don't I don't remember if they build on this or if it's just a one off in this book. Oh, I hope they do cuz I don't I don't remember. Yeah. I don't I don't, I, don't I, I like I'm thinking like cuz like there's there's kids there are, there's people in these the Siri and all of King's works have like premonitions of things that happen or remembrances that maybe be Anybody that's writing a story is an amazing author <laughs> in King's World. You could be <laughs> a guy that works in a textile mill your whole life, but if the world ends and you decide to write a no- novel about it, you are fucking amazing. <laughs> you have complete recall of conversations. <laughs> There's some 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 liberties that he takes, and I just uh, I did enjoy this how he he launched in this kind of slowly, then the the formatting of it where it was uh all in italics, which is usually like something that's imagined or like an inner monologue. Yeah. And did they, for the audiobooks, did you listen to it? They, did they launch into like a guy like speaking like he was into a speakerphone? Was it a completely different voice than Susanna's? And that's, that's a lot for you to recall. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that now, actually. I imagine that it did. And that, that would have been a really cool, really cool thing to see. Uh, cool writing that allowed for cool voice acting. You know? Yeah, that would have been very neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, they notice that most of these bodies are 
old, like basically skeletons. Some of them are fresh, mm -hmm. and there are thousands of them, yeah, like just everywhere. And um, so it kind of makes Eddie think of like he finally gets like the whole "the world has moved on" statement mm -hmm. from this because like there is no going back to the regular world after this is what has become regular. Yeah, these people can't, they don't know regular. This is yeah. the regular. They don't, what, his world is as foreign to them as this world is to him. That he, it just doesn't make sense. And it makes Susanna think of her father's philosophy on religion, um, which is that, like, God exists, but he doesn't really care what happens to us. Happy Easter, you yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Easter all recording, so. <laughs> well, as you can tell, we celebrate very religiously. Pun. But, yeah, uh that oh man there's another quote about like if god existed then he's dead or so i don't know just one of those things like okay kind of like the world has moved on but in different sense yeah and i kind of i kind of like that that the order of the world doesn't care so okay we're not we're now up to our own vices and we will do with that as humanity sees fit and sometimes it's not great sometimes yeah. it's stringing people up to fucking speakers you yeah know? <laughs> Um, but then the drums start, and they're like, oh, we better fucking skedaddle. Yeah, this, we're around dead bodies hanging from speakers, and here comes the sound from those speakers. That's, that's no. I'm out. And uh, before we find out what's going to happen, we hop back over to Gasher and Jake. Of course. Um, Gasher is still just constantly hitting on and smacking Jake, and uh, he knocks him down, and then pulls him up by his fucking lip. Yeah. Could you imagine... Even at your 90 pounds as an 11-year-old or something, that's still by your fucking lip. By your fucking lip. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> there might not be a character that gets beat up. I mean, Jake hasn't been in many pages, honestly, in this story. But he gets fucked. <laughs> he goes through some <laughs> shit, dude. How? I mean, if he is just a normal healing human, he always has cuts and bruises on him from his last ass whooping. Yeah. You know? And, like, Jake's definitely had it the worst of any character so far. I mean, like, you know, he's, he's died. So, like, that's <laughs> that's that's by or you know, number one. But, like, yeah, he's had, he's just going through hell this whole time, man. I mean, Rowan did lose fingers and a toe. But, but Jake died. <laughs> You're right. He did die. I imagine hey, he did twice. He, tw he died twice. He did die twice. The one Damn. of them kind of didn't happen anymore, so it's like one and a half times. <laughs> you think if they go back to that, his body would be down there? As in, I, uh, I think so. That would be very interesting. I do believe. I kind of don't want to find out. I wouldn't either. But, but I like that. I like that thought experiment. That that would be Jake's bones or whatever down there, you know. Yeah. How many how much time has passed? So I do believe that Jake was in this world and that Jake died, and here comes Jake again. Jake two. Jake two point oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake two obsessed with trains. <laughs> <laughs> we made him better. <laughs> we can rebuild him. We have the technology. <laughs> That's what happened. At the bottom, he didn't die. He just got rebuilt by slow moons, and they include a whole bunch of train-loving fantasies to keep him whole. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Gasher points out a uh, another booby trap to Jake. There's, like, these two stones that, like, if you step on them, it's going to bring this, like, there's a fountain hanging up. Somehow. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. <laughs> a whole ass, is like, pink stone or something like that, they say. And yeah, like like marble is what it was. Yeah, yeah. marble fountain. Yeah, just, and uh, it's gonna come crashing down if you step on those. And for some reason, I picture for in order for this to like work, this they're in like a they're still above ground to me. Yeah, right. But they are running in like in neighborhood or city streets, but have been you know debris and trash and shit that have stacked up and kind of made it like a tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. For some reason, I picture this as being like the food court in a mall, with like okay. enough like natural light above. I don't know why, but it's been just and the tiles. I don't, I don't fucking know. Like they somehow got into a mall, and that this is 
the food court of the mall that somehow had like a, a fountain, but had a lot of open area. But now it's booby trapped and there's still trash and shit. That's just how I see it. I like that. Yeah. Um. And so Jake thinks about setting it off just now, like and killing both of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he doesn't. And they put a quote here that I really liked. Um, his decision to live a little longer was not based on any hope that Roland would find him. It was just that this was what Roland would do. Go on until someone made him stop, and then a few yards farther if he's good. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, I like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's definitely a Roland sentiment of, I'm going to go until you stop me, and then I'm going to go somewhere. Keep going, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then we hop back over to Roland. And uh, he's kind of hesitant to trust Oi at first um, because, you know, it's just a a Billy Bumbler. Yeah. um, So he he keeps trying to stop to look for clues, um, like look for scraps of clothing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But he realizes, like, I'm just slowing us down and Oi keeps leading us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Because I keep finding clues. And so I think that Oi is doing a good job. Is Roland and Oi like the dad that doesn't want a dog and then the dog that loves the dad? <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Like <laughs> the meme of just like dad didn't want a dog. And then you see like it cuts to a picture of like dad and the dog cuddling. They're sleeping on the couch together. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he sees that tripwire that Gasher and Jake saw earlier and mm-hmm. he avoids it. Um, it's kind of a tight fit for him because he had to, like crawl under it, um, but he he also finds Jake's backpack, and so he he <laughs> takes that he puts it on, which I thought was funny because I like just imagining like this big burly man putting on like a little kid backpack. I wrote down in my book, Rowan in a Thomas the Tank Engine backpack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, Jake probably won't have one of those, but that's what I imagine now. It's just like a, I mean, and a little one too. That's more yeah. like a first grader, you know? <laughs> yeah, like he's just got one of those. It's like, like that big, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he puts the straps on. He kind of has to hold his arms out like this one because <laughs> it's too small to put him down. <laughs> I'm coming, Jake. <laughs> oh my god. Stupid. <laughs> so yeah, he finds his backpack and puts that on. I mean, I guess like to save it. You know, there's yeah, so he can bring it to him. I don't remember if Jake's gun is still in the backpack. Eddie hasn't. Oh yeah, he gave it to him. Didn't yep. he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because one thing we forgot to mention was uh when Roland and Eddie, or Roland split up from Eddie and Susanna. He told them like once you get to the cradle, shoot your gun into the air every like thirty minutes or so, mm-hmm. so that I know to come look for you. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh. Good idea, and I guess you could probably hear a gunshot. Oh, uh, Roland also has crazy good hearing. So yeah, he he has like daredevil senses, but also sight. He's Hawkeye and Daredevil together. Yeah, man, unstoppable. Hawk, 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 Devil. Dare I? <laughs> <laughs> dare I? I don't know. Dare, dare you? <laughs> He's just always like. Mm, dare I? <laughs> mm, dare I? <laughs> Walks up to the hors d'oeuvres table and he's like, ooh, dare I? <laughs> I better not. Oh, I'm so bad. Uh, so we jump back to Eddie and Susanna and they finally get some action. Yeah, so they hear like a crowd screaming and cheering in the distance. Yeah. And um, they realize like, oh, this is one of those public executions that we were imagining before. Mm-hmm. And like uh, they get a little bit closer, and like this weird kid dressed up in like what Eddie calls a Lord Fauntleroy outfit. Don't know what that is. What that's a reference to? Yeah, I I thought about googling it, and then I forgot because I was driving while I was listening to it. To me, it's Lord Farquaad now. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's better than whatever. <laughs> that I read that, and I was like, I don't know what that is. So now I'm, I'll just imagine Lord Farquaad. He's a little guy. Yeah, just a little little guy dressed up like a fancy lad. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a little lad who loves berries and cream. <laughs> he's a berries and cream guy. Wow, that's a good one. What a terrible time for TikTok. Berries and cream talk was like 
top five worst to me. I despised it. Yeah, and um, weirdly enough, like that got started by uh, like Justin McElroy of like the uh, My Brother, My Brother and Me podcast. Really? He he uploaded that audio, and um, that's the like the audio that everybody used. Like that's what set it off. Wow. So he's like the original video. If you were to like follow the audios back, yeah. You remember the commercial? Yeah. Like from yeah. Commercials and were so bad. The dude who was him in a commercial, like yeah. the berries and cream guy in the commercial, now has a TikTok oh, no. where he is just dressing up like the berries and cream boy. And he was probably late to the... I yeah. love... Like he's still putting out videos of berries and cream stuff. I love seeing celebrities and brands be like three months late yep. to trends. Like I saw something like a freaking Houston Astros put like a oh no oh no oh no 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 sound I was like oh my god that was like last summer what are we doing yeah like that that audio still pops up sometimes but like it's that's not how you're gonna get views We're yeah not, I'm not that's not you know three out of ten videos on my for you page you know yep and hilarious to see these people that are paid to create content be so Netflix is the time. is a cake have you seen that oh my god why would that be a show it's from everything I can see, it's so bad. Okay, I didn't know. I was about to say you watched it. I was like, oh my god. No, I haven't watched it. <laughs> I've I've watched YouTubers making fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you want to watch that for twenty minutes, dude? It it was painful. Like, like the jokes are bad and forced, yeah. and like everybody's laughing like they're being held at gunpoint. Like, like laugh or we will shoot. Oh, god. And like, the weird thing is. Like, they have to tell, like, which of these is, like, cake or whatever. But they also have to stand, like, 15 feet away. Yeah, so you can't actually see so, it. So, yeah, like, like if I was looking at, like, your stairs over there and I was like, hmm, which one of those is cake? I couldn't fucking tell. Yeah. Especially if you do good lighting or something that can kind of blend them. Yeah. yeah. I don't fucking know. And um, uh, it was ridiculous. And in, in one episode, one of the guys even, like, cheats. Because, um, like, after they guess which is cake, they also have, like, a cooking competition to try to guys things like they, they try to make a, a realistic looking cake as well and he chose like tacos as okay and um he was like oh mine don't look that good like in comparison to the real tacos so i'm gonna put some of my fake tomatoes in the real tacos to make it harder for the judges that's a good idea though and, and like he said this to the camera yeah and like and he won oh no and he, he didn't like and like they didn't say anything about it. They were just like, oh, well, you won. That's a good idea, though. <laughs> Blur the lines, baby. Yeah. Wow. Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> Wild card. <laughs> um, but the Lord Fauntleroy, um, <laughs> Lord Farquaad. Yeah, our, our little lad. Um, he gets closer, and they... He actually has a grenade behind his back. Of course, these everybody in Lud just has fucking grenades. Yeah, obvi. Um, also, he's not a little kid. He is a uh, small person. Yeah, I did. I did say the M word earlier, and I want. I, I, I caught it before I said it, and I'm I'm a little person. Yeah, that's that's my bad. And I was just like, oh, Steven. Yeah, it's forty years ago. Yeah. So I like, just like schizophrenia was thought about a little bit differently. Like we have to. Yeah. I do believe that that word was the the general accepted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, wasn't it even called like dwarfism? Yeah. So, I mean. And it was just like like the the trope of having them be dressed up like weird and oh, like. Oh, I get you. I yeah. get you. So that because they are, they are, they are smaller, they have yeah. to dress weird. I get you. That, yeah, that and is. And that they have to be like the, the crazy ones. That they have to, yeah, like munchkins from. Uh, yeah. Or like the, uh, like the psycho midgets from Borderlands. I have never played Borderlands. Oh, there's a whole class of enemy. Oh, yeah? And they're just... That are called the Psycho Midgets. Kind of all Borderlands people are kind of nuts, though, right? I mean... Yeah, like all the bad guys are the Psychos. Okay. There's like a special type of Psycho. And they're just... They have to run together and yeah. keep to themselves because they're little people. Well, yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. Have you seen... Uh, okay. I don't agree with it all, but somehow it creeps into my algorithms. The uh, the like midget wrestling league. Have you seen the video of like the people like introducing themselves? Uh, I saw one just pop up on my feed page today. Actually, it's it's very strange, and they are some weird people. I'd, and it's not because they're small; it's just because they're fucking weird. <laughs> we'll talk about it off air. 
<laughs> Backyard wrestling kind of stuff you know, usually does attract some pretty goofy characters, for sure. Definitely. And there, what, what is the obsession with like white trash people and little people? Why are there like little people throwing things? Why are there little people's in wrestling? Like I don't I, know, man. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's wrong too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. But so Susanna, um, you know, as soon as she sees the grenade in his hand, just pulls out her gun and pop. Yeah, Susanna thinks back to like what Roland said on the bridge. If I would have seen it earlier. You know, I could have just got it. He knows I could have shot it, and I know I could have shot it. And Roland just sounds like, fuck it. Bow! Yep. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> um, but then after that, the crowd starts running at them. Like, the whole yeah. crowd of people. Yeah. And Susanna's just, pa, 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 mowing them down. Mm-hmm. And Eddie's trying to help, but his gun is stuck in his underwear. So I imagine that it's going to be you. You've, you know, like a pistol. What the, yeah. the, the design is? It's going to be the little piece of the iron sight. That's, that's what I think it is. Like got stuck, and it just like it dug in. Now it was he couldn't get it out. Yeah. God damn it, Eddie! Why are you gonna put it in your fucking pants like a loser, anyways? Right. You have gun holsters. <laughs> like everybody here has one. Or if not, you've had plenty of fucking time to make one. Yeah. You guys made Roland a whole fucking Minecraft leather outfit. Okay. And like he made he made a special holster for Susanna. Like there's got Eddie's yeah. got to have one. Yeah. God damn Eddie. So he struggles getting and you gotta remember like Susanna only has six shots. Yeah. That's all she has in her gun. That's what I mean. I don't think that they do the reloading trick as quick as Roland does. Yeah, probably not. Which he hasn't done since. It sucks that he lost his hand before we got to see him do that again. Yeah. Uh, I forget if there's another instance where he's maybe doing that with his, his ring and his pinky finger and getting into the gun real quick. So that was always a really cool scene in a toll where he's like, he's getting the, the cartridges, the burn print on his thumb from where he's, he's pressing it out. I always thought that was fucking badass. That was really cool. Yeah. It's like sizzling and he could smell it and he's like, what the fuck ever? He just, just unloading again. Yeah. Uh, but after Eddie gets his gun out, he, he joins in and starts. Um, shooting, and he's kind of like he realizes like whatever his head thought about this gunslinging business, his hands discovered they actually liked it just fine. And I, it seems like Eddie and Susanna are both like they want to their their higher society part of them is like no, I'm not a killer, I'm a lover, not a fighter, I'm a poet. And their hands are like I fucking love this shit. Yeah, they're like, like what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> no, I don't like it at all. Oh, you're all dead. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but the, uh, after a little bit of realizing like, oh, Hey, half of our friends are dead now. People start to retreat. Yeah. And, um, and they even like shoot two of them in the back. Don't they? Is the run away? I don't remember. I think Eddie shoots at least one of them in the back. Yeah. Just cause he's bad. I think he's like frustrated about his pants getting stuck. <laughs> he just takes it out on one of them. <laughs> you made me look stupid. Yeah. Definitely wasn't my fault. <laughs> The, yeah, the people running at you with sticks and fucking stones. <laughs> and you're the one that can't get your pants. Your, your gun pulled out. Um, but some of them like, stick behind. And Susanna asks them, like, why are you doing this? Like, Why do you do that? Why, do you, why are you sacrificing these people to these drum sounds? And uh, they tell them, well, because the ghosts and the machines will get mad if we don't. Yeah, what, what are you talking about? Of course we're sacrificing them because the ghosts and machines dumbass. <laughs> yeah, like Scarlett Johansson is going to come here and whoop our ass if we don't. Sacrifice people. Is she a ghost in a machine? Oh, she did, she did that Ghost in the Shell movie. Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell. Like it was like a, it was like an anime live action movie. Oh. Whatever I got to do to get Scarlett Johansson to come over, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts in the machines or not, I'm here for it. And um, they did recognize Eddie and Susanna as gunslingers. I did want to mention. Yeah, that. at one point they did. So these are still people of somewhat society. That yeah, remember at least something of how society used to be. Yeah, they've they've heard of gunslingers and they know, like, oh, this is impressive. I wonder if it's just because they recognize guns. They recognize, you know, firearms. Like, oh, yeah. the only people that have firearms are gunslingers. Well, it raises a good point though, because earlier Jake heard gunfire in the town. You're right. Maybe just uh, Roland's gun then. Yeah, that that they could be like, oh, that's that's made from King Arthur's sword, as we've as we've theorized. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, that's a cool gun. Yeah. Eddie, you got, like, whatever gun. A little piece of shit gets stuck in your pants. You got a little pea shooter, whatever. (laughs) 
And then, um, so they order two of the people. Um, one of them introduces herself as Maud. The other one, um, Eddie just calls Jeeves because he kind of reminds him of a butler for some reason. Is he dressed that way or like he stood that way or walked that way or something? Yeah. Something made him be like, oh, this guy's a little butler. Mm -hmm. I want to just call him Jeeves. So that's what we get as his name. Um, But they order the two of them to bring them to Blaine's cradle. And these people instantly freak out. They're like, no, no, we're not going to do that. We will die. Yeah. He will kill us and you for bringing. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Like that is death for both. Just kill us here because we're not doing it for. I didn't want to say that uh, they, they're they talking about, like, while they're doing this for the Ghost of the Machines, and they fucking mention Shirley Jackson's story, The Lottery, here. I oh, forgot shit. that they actually mentioned it. It's, it's fucking canon. It's right there. Oh, amazing. I forgot that. I even put a star by. I was like, okay, that wasn't just me making connections that... No, that's what, what he's referencing here. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, where were we? Sorry. Uh, I just... Whenever I see a blue star, I'm like, oh, my God. What would I, would I, <laughs> what, what would it pass me think? <laughs> um... And they're like, we won't take you into the cradle, but we'll, yeah. we'll get you close. Yeah. Um, and they get close enough where they can see that it's a big building with a lot of the, like the animal guardians as like statues up top. Very cool. Very yeah. cool imagery. I would love to see that. Yes. And what is uh, it's, is it? Just like a train station is what we're looking at. Like a. Maybe like a big, like big city bank is what the front of this would maybe. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to picture like a, for some reason, like, like the word like Grand Central Station in New York. Yeah, and for some reason here, I was thinking with this, it was also like a, uh, what do you call a, a greenhouse where it's like all glass and like a lot of natural light still. Oh, for yeah. some reason, that's that's uh, maybe it's like you know uh, in Futurama where Madison Square Garden is now a cube. Yeah, Madison Square Cube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mass's cube garden or whatever it is, yeah. yeah. That's for something something like that is how I saw this. I was like, okay, there's just a lot of glass, a lot of natural light. But also like the interior of like a bank with like marble countertops and oh just something very, very cool looking. Yeah. To earn the name of Cradle, you know. Yeah. Um, but now we hop back over to Gasher and Jake. Um Gasher has Jake open a manhole cover that uh also has Lamerc Foundry written on it. And he hears something like tear or pop in his back. That's not good, man. No, that's... You can't just be doing this to my guy, Jake. Yeah. Like, hearing weird pops and, like, tears and stuff, like, I'm 30, that's fine. But, like, Jake's, like, 11. 11? Yeah, Yeah. your shit isn't supposed to pop yet. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But, so, he he pretends that he can't lift it at first. Mm -hmm. Um, Then Gastro just starts choking him out. He's like, okay, actually, hey, look, I'm stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power of... Jackass. <laughs> um, then he has Jake go down first, and uh, as they're like going down the ladder, they hear the fountain crash. Yeah, and Jake's like, oh, "Damn it, R.I.P. Roland." Yep, there it went into the end of days. Yep. But even Jake noticed this booby trap so easily. Like even reading this, I was like, "There's no way Roland gets tricked by the fucking tiles after." seen the first booby trap, you know. Right. I don't think he'd let his guard down after one. He'd be like, okay, now that I've seen one, I need to keep on looking for more. It's not like, oh, yep. I've found the booby trap. Like, no, there are booby traps yeah, here. Everywhere. I need to be wary of everything here. And um, then we hop back over to Roland, and we find out he actually had walked past the fountain trap and then grabbed, like, a, like a chunk of concrete. And once he was, like, safely far enough away, he threw it at the tiles and uh, it's just so he would set off the trap and trick them. Yeah, and he also he knows that he's not going to be leaving that way. Like right away, he's like, "We're not going to be leaving this way, anyways." So I might as well just close this entrance off. Like, either we're going to die down here, or I'm going to probably kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and it's whatever. I'm either going to walk out of here in a different way, or whatever. Fuck them. Or know? I'm not walking out of here. Yeah, yeah they're they're <laughs> they're way in here. The little secret path is now doomed. Whatever. Fuck them. Yeah. And um, they get to the manhole cover. And um, I go, okay, well, we're going to have to crawl down there. And he, he's like, I want to make a little makeshift leash for you because he just has an infinite supply of leather strips. But not enough to make Eddie a holster. No. Right? Yeah, no, let's not no. use our leather for that. Um, And then, like, it's kind of cute. He, like, crawls into uh, Roland's shirt yeah. as they're, like, <laughs> crawling down the ladder. <laughs> I was like, aw. Ache, 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 ache. Oi, oi. 
There's one. There was one part earlier where um, they said the word hell. Yeah. And w- boy, it was just like L. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jake would be an or Oi would be an instant classic if he was in a show. Maybe oh yeah. Not to the level of like Grogu or you know Baby Yoda. Yeah. But he could have he could sell merchandise. Oh, for sure. You know, if they have an actual depiction, like we can guess on. There's a lot of you know renditions of Oi out there. Again, don't look it up just to save you any type of spoilers because Oi is a bigger part of the story later on. And uh, but yeah, like if we can decide on what he looks like, I wonder if the I I didn't look through this section of the book um at the of my book. Yeah, like a physical one that has all the illustrations. Ooh. But I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's an illustration of Oi. I'll Maybe. have to look that up. I need to find it. Yeah. After I finish like reading the next section, I'll just go through everything and like look for it. For sure. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be a good one because, yeah, if, w- they could get that on screen, and I mean it's gonna be heavily CGI. Oh, but, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it could be fun. It could be a good time. Hopefully, like the, by the time we'd get to this. They'd be able to afford some CGI because they've made like two good seasons or something, or a really good yeah. movie so far, you know. Or, or like instead of CGI, maybe they get like Jim Hansen <laughs> Company to like do some really cool practical effects or something. Oh, I'll sign just putting maybe like a <laughs> put like a raccoon tail on a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the um, old Star Trek episode where they have like the alien dog? <laughs> Dude, they just like tape like a wig to it, like a uh, like cardboard like unicorn horn. I it's very obviously just like a dog <laughs> with like a weird wig on. I do. I've seen this picture, and I I know what you're saying. Now you said about the uniform. Oh my god! Just put a horn on a dog, and now it's like, it could just be a fucking dog. <laughs> right. Like, oh, there's a dog. Okay, dogs exist here. Cool. I, l- I love early Star Trek and like how their budget was just like whatever Gene Roddenberry had in his. Had in his basement, basically. What can you make up? I got a, I got yeah. a paper towel roll and some scotch tape. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Yep. <laughs> uh, um, they they get down into the sewer and let him down on the leash, and he starts uh, following him again. Mm-hmm. So then Eddie and Susanna get to the cradle, and everything is just like sparkling clean and like shining white. And she sees it's because, like, there's some kind of, like, fountain that's basically, like, has water going down the walls all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why, like, no dust is collected, no grime, basically constantly being washed. That's really badass. Yeah. And I was like, how is that still going? I'm curious about nuclear the Nuclear power has yeah. to be, right? Like a nuclear right. cell, something that's turning, yeah. Atomic slug. Atomic slug. Um, but at the top of the building, there's a statue of a golden warrior with a revolver in one hand and an olive branch in the other. And their first thought, they're both immediately like, oh, that's Roland. Mm-hmm. Like, wait, that can't be Roland. They're like, maybe it's Roland. It's one of Roland's ancestors, if not. Like, yeah. they're like, oh, that's that's the gunslinger. And, and um, she says something like, Roland of Gilead stood atop the cradle of blood dressed in gold. That's badass. Yeah. I wonder what, okay, so... On our American seal, don't we have an olive branch and something else in the Bald Eagle's talons? Uh, arrows, I think. Basically. Yeah. A, a, a gun. and, Huh. Interesting. That was very interesting. Yeah. Um, and they, Then Eddie and Susanna want to fuck, but they're like, oh, it's not the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and modern Jeeves are like, okay, we're, we're done. This is as far as we're taking you. Yeah. All right. Bye. Later. See ya. Go, go, get, go get yourself electrocuted. Yeah, they still think they're like, you're going to shoot us in the back as soon as we turn around. And he's like, fucking goddamn, just leave. I don't yeah. leave. I don't care. I'm not even getting horny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to plow before we die. All right. And um, yeah, they start getting all, all romantic, but then it starts raining. And so they're like, ah, oh, let's just go inside. Because of the rain. Yeah. You know, as, as, it, as it does. So before. Or right whenever this happens, it says that Susanna thinks about telling Eddie her secret. But, uh, but of course, the time and place were wrong. She could no more tell him she might be pregnant now than she could pause to read the words written on the sculpted portal, portal totems. It's like, oh boy, so this girl's really pregnant. Yeah, and I was like, I had a bad thought that I hope doesn't come true. I was like, Eddie's not the only person she's had sex with. Like, what if she's got a demon baby? Maybe not the well person, not the only thing. Yeah, I guess the <laughs> only entity. But I was like, what if there's a demon baby? Demon baby, Eddie baby, 
maybe an Odetta baby from the old world. Oh, yeah. You know, it wouldn't be too far-fetched. I yeah, that's, that's not impossible. Because I... Speaking, I'd be more surprised if that was the case, though. For sure. Because it, it'd be hard to tie that in. That'd be a whole other layer. But I was yeah. thinking, like, in, in sort of time... This is, I don't know how soon pregnancies start, like, showing for women. And, like, they start to understand, like, oh, I'm going to be pregnant here. I don't imagine that the demon happened all that long ago. You know, it was in this book. Yeah. She's probably been fucking Eddie for at least since the end of the beach. Yeah, and I'm like, it's probably Eddie's. Pro- that's, but, but what if, you it, know? It could also be the demon baby. Yeah, and I wouldn't want, maybe it's, like, half demon, half Eddie. <laughs> half oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene in Always Sunny in Philadelphia where they're talking about uh, one of the characters is pregnant and they don't know who the dad is. And so they get all the dads together and talking about him. And the character's like, well, you know, she sleeps with a lot of guys. And one of the characters like, yeah, you know, any of the sperms could have went over there and ate in the egg and grown up big and strong. It's like, the sperms don't eat the egg. You know that. I was like, doesn't eat the egg, grow up be big and strong, become a baby? <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> such a great way. To think. <laughs> it's so ass backwards. That's fantastic. But I love oh, it. my God. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love that show. I need to watch more of it. It's amazing. It's the best show on television. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so we we hop back over to to Gasher mm-hmm. and Jake and um, Gasher. You know, he's slowed down. He's more relaxed because he thinks that Roland is dead. Um, and he starts singing some like folk song that he mm-hmm. knows and um. And he's like, Jake, you you sing. And Jake's like, oh, I don't want to sing at first. Yeah. And he's like, I said sing. <laughs> and uh, so he sings like some song that he learned at camp. It's my girl's a corker. She's a New Yorker. I buy her everything to keep her in style. She's got a pair of hips just like two battleships. Oh, boy, that's how my money goes. Where's the rhyme in the first place? I can't follow the rhythm. Yeah, um, the, and he sang it in the book, and it felt like, you know, it felt a little smoother there, but I, I can see reading it out probably wouldn't. Yeah, I, I bet you he just kind of, he probably thought of ways and then put it to a rhythm and just like to any, any like sing-along song. I didn't try to find a rhythm there, I just, yeah. looked, I just looked for rhymes, and there isn't one. Like corker and Yorker yeah. and ships and hips. My girl is a corker. She's a New Yorker. I bought her everything to keep her in style. She's got a pair of hips just like two battleships. That's that's a tough one to like yeah. keep with that. I don't know. I'm not that much of a musician, but I try to I try to remember some of my shit. Yeah, I I appreciate poems, but I cannot um, cannot tell you why they work. You asked me to identify amb- iambic pentameter. It takes me reading it about three or four times and seeing like. Okay, does this sound like a Shakespearean poem? <laughs> if it does, <laughs> iambic. There it is. Da 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 Yeah. I don't get it at all. That that stressed unstress is like, but I can stress any syllable I want, bro. Right. How like, you gonna tell me what syllable to stress? Right. <laughs> um there's there's this uh nerdcore rapper that I really like, uh MC Lars. Okay. And uh he, he does some like songs about grammar and like about poetry um i'll send them to you they're, they're pretty cool um, you need to send me them asap and they oh off air i don't i don't i don't uh relinquish that information online yeah but um i think that you would find them interesting for sure yeah okay um they oh and he hates jake's song by the way yeah, he, he sees Jake's ears like they're jug handles and yanked him to a stop. <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, Gasser. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why was you singing something that bad? <laughs> and, like, yeah. he hates Jake's singing voice. Like, he just, like, no. Nothing Jake can do is right. Like, yeah. you fucking suck. Stop singing. Uh, they find another ladder and uh, go down it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once they get down here, there's, like, neon lights on the wall. Yeah. Which, I fucking love neon. Um, it's such a cool effect that yeah, it uh, it any time it's like uh, it just, it changes the whole mood of a setting from our you know uh, what are the, what are these called what are these lights called filament lights yeah filament or like yeah halogen or something like that something like that right we're, we're not light light smiths <laughs> but yeah I know Edison over here they're amazing especially in like a 
dystopian movies or something like that. Yeah, they like just somehow ha- have, Yeah, why is there always neon? There just is, okay? Because it's, it's cool. It's dark outside. It's usually rainy. And we got fucking neon, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, the machinery is getting even louder. Like he knows that whatever is going on, he's getting close to the source of it. Mm-hmm. Um, they make their way down this this tunnel. Um, pretty short, sh- pretty short tunnel. They come to a door with a intercom, mm-hmm. and um, Gasher pushes the button, and this just like really surprised me because you know the world has moved on. There's no technology anywhere. Now there's neon lights, and he knows how to work an intercom. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, there's still some technology, and some people know how to use it. Yeah, they've taught themselves how to use this little bit of technology, you know? Yep. And obviously, they're they're now under the city. Yeah. And we've seen, yeah, so. And um, the person that opens the, or that answers the intercom is the TikTok man. <laughs> Just you. Anyway, do you want to see my renegade? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he wants a password. But Gasher forgot the password. Ah, fucking idiot, Gasher. And he's like, you know it's me. Just let me in. He's like, I know it's you, but I don't know who you got with you there. Yeah. And uh, they they might be trying to force you in here. Mm. Smart man, old Tiki. Yep. And um, He's trig. Gasher says. <laughs> so Gasher's like, you know, like he sticks his tongue out at him, but uh, TikTok says something about like, oh, the cameras don't work anymore. Yeah. Um. So that's why I can't see your see your friend. Yeah. And um, so Gasher thinks for a minute, and he's like, oh yeah, and he like takes off his scarf from his head, and he's got the password written on a piece of paper. Yeah. But he can't read. <laughs> <laughs> He, he can't read, but he has someone wrote the password out for him. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> fucking gosh, it did. And I fucking died laughing at that. Yeah, that he can't fucking read. Oh, gosh. Um, so he makes Jake read it because he, he can tell that Jake's an educated little fella. Yeah. And um, it makes Jake want to laugh. Like, he, he's trying really hard not to laugh at Gasher right now. Mm-hmm. And he also just considers not doing it. Yeah. But then he's like, well, he'll probably make me regret that choice. Yeah. Uh, so the password, he says, is bountiful. It should have been 19. That would have been funny. It should have been 19. I mean, yeah. just because uh, anytime you're going to incorporate a password in a book, you got to make it mean something. Right. If your whole thing is on circumstance and ca and fucking fortune and destiny. Yeah. You could have done something more than bountiful. But yeah. I digress. Um. Then we hop back over to Roland and Oi, and uh, this is a really short little section, but they're getting close enough that they can actually hear the singing like echoing down the tunnels. Yeah. And um, so Roland like takes Oi's leash off and just lets him run. Just tells him like to take off. Ick, 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 ick. Ick, He starts chasing after him. Yeah. And then uh, we s- now switch back over to Susanna and uh, Eddie. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and she knows somehow, because that's just everybody just somehow knows stuff. Um, she knows that this rain that's has just started is probably going to last a long time. Of course, it weeks, does, or maybe months even. Yeah, it's just going to rain forever. Yeah, I mean they did just come out with desert, but now we're. In the were you great picturing rain. the? Are they in a prairie? Are they in a like luscious green landscape? What do you? What do you? That's kind of what I was like imagining. Like they were kind of like. In a pretty grassy, foresty area, like they, for some reason, in my mind, they went forest to desert. Not desert, but like, definitely not in a lot at the the crossroads or whatever the river crossing. Yeah, by a river, and it has life. But for me, it's still like an old western saloon. I I, I can't like escape that just yet. Because this series definitely has that vibe. Sure. Yeah, having life feels wrong. Like right. maybe that's the fallout thing too, where it's not a desert. The capital wasteland is not necessarily a desert, but it's not. It's desertish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess yeah. What's the classification for a desert? Like less than ten inches of precipitation a year, or something like that. So maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like the reason that um I kind of pictured it that way is just like 
the buffaloes like grazing out on the fields. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is kind of what made me think that. Okay. It would still be pretty sparse grass, though. No, I think you're right. I was just like saying, like what I I can't escape thinking that yeah. it's kind of a desert. So. Um. And they, you know, are walking through, and they see a sign that says North Central Positronics welcomes you to the Cradle of Lud. Southeast travel Blaine, northwest travel Patricia. As most ways of travel do, we do not travel in direct directions, north, south, east, or west. We go on angles here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they, they realize, like, Patricia must be the train that they saw in the river mm-hmm. um, over by the bridge. And uh, Eddie's like, oh, they got the colors wrong. Patricia was the blue train, and Blaine's the pink train. Gender norms. Over colors. Yeah. And I was like, like, oh, Eddie. Oh, Eddie. <laughs> and he's from the furthest point in time. He should be the most advanced. The right? most <laughs> the most understated. But no. God dang it, Eddie. Um, but they follow the signs to Blaine. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a really weird looking train because it is pink, yes. But it's like flesh colored pink. Yeah. Like it's not, like I was expecting like, you know, like, Bubblegum pink almost or something like that, but they're like, oh, it looks like flesh. It's gross. Yeah, that is gross. And there's like no windows on it except for at the very front where like the doctor would sit. Yeah, so this is more of like a futuristic looking train, right? Yeah. Like it's going to be like a bullet looking train, isn't it? Or yeah. It's a mono, which is just like a subway train, right? Yeah. Like a, there's a monorail in Chicago, right? That's the one that. I think so, yeah. Spider-Man stops at monorail. This right? Is that a tr- monorail train? Maybe. You know what I'm talking about that scene yeah. in like Spider-Man. Spider-Man two. What two? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. When those like mask gets torn off and everybody Carefully, just agrees. He's not, a hero. Everybody just agrees not to see it and they like lift him above the crowd after he passes out. And first of all, I'm not recognizing fucking 28 year old Toby Maguire in a crowd, anyways. So yeah. like, okay, I saw your face. Whatever. You're just a regular looking white guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, the scene in like the Justice League Unlimited cartoon show, yeah, um, <laughs> where like for some reason Lex Luthor and the Flash switch bodies. I don't remember how they fit okay. Friday, but they do. Yeah, and um, he like he heads to, like he walks into a bathroom as the Flash, and he's like, "Finally, I'll take." I'll, and then like, he pulls the mask on. And he goes, "I have no clue who this is." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, even Clark Kent. Probably didn't need. He doesn't wear a mask. He just takes yeah. off his fucking glasses. Yeah, he he just takes off his glasses, changes his hair up a little bit, and like stands up straight. Like he <laughs> he doesn't hunch over. He goes from beta to alpha male. Is what yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he start. He stops doing the the, the he virgin stops walk simping. and starts doing the Chad walk. <laughs> <laughs> he stops simping for Lois Lane. <laughs> he starts working on his glutes. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> He goes from wearing like the big baggy clothes to like the skin tight. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, listen, to Joe Rogan in one ear and <laughs> no, not my <laughs> Superman, please. I forgot you really like <laughs> Superman, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, we lost another one. That is evil Superman. He just becomes go, yeah. a Chad and listens to Joe Rogan, and we Batman has tried to convince him. Is Batman listening to Joe Rogan or Superman? Because Batman's a millionaire or a billionaire. I don't. I don't. Think I don't know he, if is Joe Rogan really like for the rich. He's probably more for like the common day. Man. I think that he would. I think he would listen. I don't know if he would actually listen, but he would have like the notes of everything that like went on on that podcast for some reason. Joe like, Rogan would definitely have Jack Nicholson Joker on his show, and then not fact check anything he says. Oh, for sure. <laughs> He'd be like, uh, have you seen the Joaquin Phoenix Joker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he in, instead of like being mad and trying to kick him off like the uh, TV host guy at the end, yeah, he would just be like, oh yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, we do live in a society. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what what else is going on? You did not kill, you kill those guys. Good for you. They work for Wayne Enterprises. Good job. Yeah. Jamie, can you look that up? We got we got, we got the uh, view of the him get, killing those guys in the subway. <laughs> Shitting on Joe Rogan is my pastime. So yeah, he and he deserves it. Yeah, for sure. Fear Factor was all right though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked Fear Factor. Yeah, that was a fun show. Never liked the Man Show. I thought that was fucking stupid. Even yeah, it was kid. very dumb. Even as a kid, I thought it was dumb. Yeah. 
But yeah, I liked Fear Factor. And then you know, I was in the UFC in like 2008, 2009. I was like, oh, yeah, Joe fucking great. He, he was cool until he started talking. <laughs> Until he started having, voicing his own opinions instead yeah. of having a script. Yeah. yeah. He fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but they, they finally, or after they get to Blaine, um, there, there's a gate that they can't get through. Yeah. Um, like, he notices there like, was a little gap, but neither of them can fit through it. It's like, maybe they could fit their hand through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, there's another intercom there. And so he presses the button and he like calls out for Blaine. And he's like, "Hey, are you there, Blaine? Anybody?" Hello, hello. And uh, this like little kid's voice basically pops up, mm-hmm. like, he's like, "Hey, keep it down. You're gonna wake him up." Yeah. And they're like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I'm I'm little Blaine, the one he doesn't see, the one he forgot, the one he thinks he left behind in the ruins, or the he left behind in the room of ruin in the halls of the dead." Mm. Like, okay, now I need the Blaine backstory. I need the yeah. Blaine more. When are you going on? What is it? In the audiobook, I don't know if you guys see on the. We have a like a depiction of what the, the buttons look like behind the talk inner button. Did he oh. did he list all of these numbers for you? I don't think so. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. That's what the numbers look like on his. Oh, wow. No, absolutely not. It's just one through 99, but in a diamond pattern. Like one up top and 99, very, I think it was like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like That's to, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I was wondering, because like sometimes they will. I believe that in the audiobook, whenever you're reading like the uh, Jake's uh, essay, like he reads the whole fucking thing of saying like Blaine is a pain, Blaine is a pain, Blaine is a pain, the rain is pain. Blaine is a... <laughs> he reads fucking all of it. <laughs> like oh my god, this is monotonous. We don't need to read all of this. Thank you though. There is a um a point in like the Stormlight Archives um audiobook where um each chapter has like a little like um I can't think of the word for it, but like it has like a little like couple of sentences before it starts mm-hmm. um in in each section they're like themed after something so it'll be like you know excerpts from a book in world or um excerpts from this one prophecy yeah, yeah. and uh there's one that's just like this like crazy guys like ramblings flowers for agile um, right <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> and um that's actually really fitting um <laughs> no exactly what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> um but this is one that's like basically a paragraph's worth of numbers and um it's like one point two one blah 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 and like the narrator just reads the whole thing but in a way that it's still kind of entertaining because he like he does it like almost all in one breath and he's just like not stopping at all. Just like yeah. one point two one four five six and it's that's really still cool. interesting. Uh a lot of carry. Uh, yeah, very, King's very first novel is told from like uh, like police reports and like intercom. A lot of this in the stand is too, where it'll, it's like uh, over the intercom and it, it it'll like read like a uh, like something coming through the uh, oh god AP wire or something like that, right? Okay, and it, it has like who's saying it and then like them saying over like the, who's saying it, what day, what time it is, and like whenever the narrators read that verbatim, I fucking love it. It's like oh that's so fucking cool. I feel like I'm reading this. But then there's other times where like you say like they're reading a whole number. I'm like okay, King, let's allow some some abridgedness to happen here because yeah. I understand because he, he doesn't allow any of his novels to be abridged. They have to be read. There's no like you can't have different voices. It's just straight up read it. As if you're in a room with somebody reading it out loud, and by the way, yeah. So we got we got we got pictures of numbers. That's that's what the whole thing was based on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But you know, it's no good. He he warned them too late. Big Blaine is now awake. Yeah. And um, the whatever the voice that is, little Blaine has basically like gone into hiding, and uh, Big Blaine like starts yelling at them like, "Who are you? And how dare you?" Disturb my slumber. So good on the audiobook. Oh, yeah. Not a fan of it in here because it's just in all caps. That's yeah. All That's all it is. Dang. And I can't, I don't remember exactly what Blaine sounds like. I remember his John Wayne impressions. Yeah. But I don't remember anything else. So I'm like, okay, what voice do I have? Because I kind of, I, I will always for the rest of my life remember Eddie Dean. Susanna is pretty easy to pick up on. Roland is kind of the narrator's voice. And then Jake is just a kid. You can, you can kind of create that in your mind, you know. <clears throat> but I don't remember what fucking Blaine sounds like. I'm gonna have to get the audiobook. Yeah, he was kind of like a, a deep booming voice. Yeah, just mechanical. And, yeah, yeah. 
And um, so Eddie introduces himself, and he like explains. He basically like you know he's very straight up with them, and just kind of tells them like what their mission and what he's, why they're here, what they're on about, and um, says something about how they're from New York, New York. And uh, Lane does not believe them. Yeah, he says all the doors to there are closed. Yeah, all the doors to that where are closed. Yeah, I love that. And um, <laughs> so Eddie's just like, no, but there's. Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn and like just starts listing off all these different places. <laughs> and the Mets and Patrick Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he does the, the John Wayne impression. He's like, okay, Pilgrim, I okay, believe you. Okay, Pilgrim, I believe you. <laughs> and he's like, now I want you to ask me a question. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting because Blaine is more than a train. He yeah. has knowledge of things happening in this world. It's scary. He has more knowledge than we, the reader, have right now. Oh, for sure. I, he probably, he's probably the most knowledgeable character in this series because he knows every. He knows a lot. You know, he knows yeah. about like portals to different worlds. You know, like yeah. He's a machine, obviously, with a some some kind of connection, I believe, to a a database or some way to retrieve information because he's a train. He's obviously set on a fixed track. Obviously, he's a train. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so but yeah. Uh, like love I, it. if they were to do him today, they'd probably you know describe it or. Describe it as like he's an AI. Yeah, basically, and he's he's, he's Ultron. <laughs> yeah, but he's stuck on a train track. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, <laughs> but now we hop over to Jake and Gasher. They have entered the room of the Clock App Man. Yeah, and um, it looks like they're in like a missile silo. Is the way that Jake. This is it. Fallout to a fucking T. Yeah, I can't escape it, especially yeah. after the airlock. I'm like, okay. Yep. That I mean, you could tell me that it looks like a fucking underground full of dirt. Nope, this is a fallout shelter to me. Yep. That we are in a vault. You can't, yeah, sorry. No, you're <laughs> absolutely right. Um, and there's like, um, like five, five guys and like three, two or three ladies in here. And he's like, oh, this is gray high command, or mm-hmm. at least all that is left of it. Yeah, of the, the leaders of the grays for sure. And, um, TikTok is basically in a like sitting on a throne, um, very relaxed. The yarl, the yarl of white, run, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the pose I was thinking too. Uh, yeah, they tell it he's blonde too. So I was picturing this yarl sitting back in a fucking throne, and he's got a uh, he's got a flavor flavor clock hanging from his neck. Yeah, but Jake notices that it's running a too fast and also backwards. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> even more more reason to have it on. It's fucking badass. Yeah. And um, you know they they start talking and like one of the uh, women in the room like laughs too hard at something TikTok says, and so in the blink of an eye, like faster than humanly possible, that we could like he has a, there's a knife in her throat. Yeah, he's throwing a knife at her. Just pull it out and throw it out and hit her ass. Yeah, and um, and he's just like someone clean that up. And he gets really interested in Jake's watch. Yeah. Um, Jake's got that, like, Seiko digital watch. And um, he's like, well, how do I know it's not booby-trapped? And Jake's like, I don't know. It isn't. No. How do I prove to you that it's not booby-trapped? You know? He's like, it's just a watch. I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, well, is it run by a, a, a die Earl cell or a mono cell? And he's like, battery? I don't know. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a watch. Yeah. Um, and so he 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 gives it to him because you know he's like this guy is crazy and dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, and he realizes that the the man in the plane, um, Jonathan Quick, mm-hmm. um, he's like, was that your grandpa in the plane that yeah. we saw? And uh, uh, this impresses TikTok. He's like, oh, you're a perceptive little guy. A great grandpa, actually, but yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And um, then he repeats that poem that uh, Roland said earlier. Mm-hmm. So Lord Perth and the countryside did shake with that, or so fell Lord Perth and the countryside did shake with that thunder. And again, in the blink of the eye, faster than he could see, Jake is sent flying to the other side of the room. Like he backhand, backhands the fuck out of him. Mm-hmm. And, um, then he like he starts, you know. He, he tells Jake like, "Don't you ever say that name to me again." 
Yeah, and I don't know why that pissed him off so much. Yeah. It, but it's obviously a sore spot with him. Yeah. And maybe it's like a prophecy for his bloodline or something. I don't fucking maybe. know, you know. And it's a uh, Yeah, don't don't call him Lord Perth. That's a it's a bad thing to call Tiki. Yeah. Um but he starts interrogating Jake. He's like, "Are you a Nazi?" Like N O T S E. Oh, I love it. Such a such a great. N- never caught it. I'm surprised you did in your uh Audiobook. You yeah. must have, you must have read this, or just didn't didn't catch that he was pronounced anything. Um. So like when I take the notes, I like read the recap thing. Okay. And I yeah. use that for my bullet points. Yeah. And so she wrote it in that. A not C. Yeah. It's amazing. Ten yeah. out of ten. I love it. Um. He's like, no, I'm an American. Yeah. I was like, recent events have shown that both can be true. All right, and on to the next. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um. But as they're talking. He he sees Oi's uh, eyes in the air duct, and he's like trying really hard not to look at it. He's like, uh, uh, yeah, uh. yeah. We've had some instances where eyes darting have saved Roland. You know, it happened at uh, Toll or Lud. The Toll, Toll, yeah, Toll, yeah. Lud is where they're at now. Toll, where Allie's eyes shot up, and then it also happened at the pharmacist where. Uh, the pharmacist's eyes shut up, and he looked in the the, the mirror. The mirror right? yeah. yeah, so I guess Jake's kind of like perceptive, like, okay, don't give it yeah. away. Don't let him look. know that I'm looking at that. Yeah. And then we, uh, yeah, they uh, they jump back right then, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's when they jump back over to Roland and Oi. Yeah. Um, and so we go back in time just a little bit. Roland and Oi have reached the, uh, the door. Um, Roland's... He can't get it open. He's not surprised to that. He, he, to him, it makes sense. Like, oh, this door is locked from the other side. Someone has to let me in. Mm-hmm. And um, but he does see the air ducts. He's like, well, I'm too big to squeeze into that. But we got Billy we got Bumbler over here. Little oi boy. And oi boy beta cock. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oi boy beta cock. Fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, he tells him like, just go and look, and then come back. Yep. And uh, he repeats this to Oi a few times, and Oi's like, oh, Oi, Oi, Oi. Yeah, Oi, Oi, Ake, Oland. <laughs> <laughs> and so he sends him in there, and uh, he waits, you know, a few minutes, and um, then Oi comes back, and Roland's like, how many people are in there? And Oi actually, like, thinks for a little bit, and then he starts, like, tapping on the ground. And, like, he counts out how many people there were, and then he goes, oh, ache, and, like, taps <laughs> one more time. So great. So I think it, he ended up telling him that there's, like, six people and Jake. Yeah. And I was like, precious little guy. He's so great. He's the best. Nothing ever is going to happen to him. He is completely safe forever. <laughs> If this were another author, I might I might believe you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Roland comes up with a plan, and uh, he whispers it to Oi for some reason, just so that we, the readers, can't hear it. For sure. Because he was just talking to him just fine before. But now you need to whisper. Yeah. Um, he sends him back into the duct, and um, like I think this plan will work, but it might be a suicide mission for Oi. Yeah, and that's where the fucking chapter ends, and that's where our recap ends. Yeah, that's where our episode ends today. It was not that intentional, but I love that we're stopping here. Yeah, so like, ah, oh, god, and we have a lot to look forward to because we will be finishing up. There's still so much that's going to happen in these last like 120 pages. It's like another fucking book. I swear it. Damn, it's it's insane. So yeah. Uh, this book is crazy. It probably could have been, like I said, stretched out to two with maybe some some fun things thrown in there. But uh, this is like the TikTok man and always little thing. It's probably like one of the climaxes to me. It's like Jake coming through as a climax. Kind of them getting to the, I guess, that's a big one. Like, God, I don't even know. You could break it up into a whole bunch of different stories. You know, you have the Shardick. You have the travel, you have Jake's side, you have pulling him through, which are all three very different stories, but they all connect, yeah. obviously. And then them walking and getting to the river crossing, which is kind of just like a filler. 
<clears throat> and then this whole Gasher thing is it's a story within itself. I mean, because it's it kind of wipes the slate clean, and then you have new stakes, new things going on, new characters introduced. I mean, <clears throat> introducing the TikTok man with less than a hundred pages left in the book is crazy. Yeah, like, you know. And I, I'm I'm like, is this going to be like the big boss fight of this book, and he's going to beat him and. I'm like, I kind of like this guy. I want to see more of him. Yeah, for sure. But also, you know. I can absolutely see him being like the, you know, the guy who dies at the end of this book and us never seeing him again. And either way, I think it would be satisfying. Yeah, I think that in most cases, if it's Rowan versus, and we still got books left, you know. Yeah. <laughs> probably not very good for the the uh, the nemesis, the enemies, you know. <laughs> like, right. Usually, but I could, I would love to see you know TikTok or something like something like this. I like this character so far; he's really interesting. Just like I don't necessarily care about Lud and that, but I like this character that has the the charisma and the power to control people, yeah. not control, but to like lead people in the manner that he does. And he's also fucking insane. So, oh yeah, yeah, that's always fun too. Throwing somebody like that. If TikTok were to join the Cotet, how would you feel? Somehow, somehow in the way he joins the Cotet. They have this fucking that would be crazy fucking wild. Wasteland. Yeah. Wouldn't that, I think that's a really cool thing that... I'm not going to tell you if it does or doesn't, but that would have been a really cool fucking thing. To like Just somehow have somebody from in-world besides Roland that isn't you know this knight in shining armor Yeah. to be in the, in the fucking the, the, the party. You Especially know? with like how fucking like strong this guy is. Like, yeah. He's throwing Jake across the room and shit. Yeah, he's know? like throwing Jake across the room, like moving faster than people can see. Yeah. Like, he's... I made a joke on Twitter. He's basically Dio from JoJo's right now. Yeah. So I, I don't get the reference, but I liked it because you put the TikTok emblem on it. I was like, I know this reference. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's a guy who um, he has basically the power to like stop time for like five seconds or something. Oh, okay. And so it looks like he's just moving imperceptibly fast. Uh, um, he okay. also uses throwing knives. Ah. Um, and he's also just very like outlandish. Okay. And uh, so I was like, you know, if this guy... Like trains somebody's life force, I won't be surprised. Like that's funny. Hmm. So yeah, that uh again is the end of our breakdown for today. Do you have a closing thought or a closing sentiment that you want to go off your chest before we we wrap this up? Stephen King, <laughs> I'm talking to you right now, and I know that it doesn't matter because the series is already done. But if you introduced Oi in this book to kill him right now, he'd be very grumpy. <laughs> and I know that doesn't matter. <laughs> but I'm going to be really grumpy at you. He did introduce Jake and then kill him in the first book. Like I was saying, he has a track record. I know. That's why I was like, if it was any other author, I'd be like, oh, that's just Roland being like pessimistic. Yeah. Where there's But the- you. <laughs> it's that guy. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's definitely, there's definitely instances where, like, King will tell you what's gonna happen, and that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like, and they never saw him again. Yep. And there might be some play on words on there, like when his fucking character goes blind or some shit like that, you know, <laughs> or they fucking talk to him on a phone or something, like we doesn't see them again. Yeah. But a lot of times, I'm not telling you yes or no, but expect. If you read it in a King book and he says it's going to happen, it's what's going to happen. He'll just yeah. tell you straight up, like, no, like you're walking down this path, and at the end of it, this is going to happen. Prepare for it. <laughs> you know, and it's still going to be fucking heartbreaking. Like, no, I held out hope this whole time, and still everybody fucking died. It's Hamlet all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a tragedy every time. <laughs> and, the, and the one saving grace is that like that wasn't coming from King's narration it was coming from Roland's thoughts definitely I like that so I was like but maybe maybe not yeah it's definitely on brand for Roland's character though to use somebody as a yeah as a sure shell is. and expend them sure so. is I can't wait we got a good like seven days until how long are you gonna re- read it tonight <laughs> or very soon oh well, you gotta go out to eat I, I am going to start the audiobook as soon as I get in my car Okay, text me now you get to the point and tell me. Let me know and you find out if Boy lives or dies because it's it's a pretty good scene. Okay, yep. Yeah, all right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up because I'm going to go eat dinner and Jake's got stuff to do and 
Easter Sunday, although nothing has to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thank you all for stopping by. If you made it all the way through, why have you not fucking liked or subscribed yet? Yeah, like, what the hell? It's been there this whole time. Move your fucking mouse. Quit being lazy. Open up your phone if you got YouTube Premium. Click fucking like and subscribe. Like, figure it out. All right? Please. You need it. You crave it. This is the good cop. We love it. Cop. Good, co- good po- podcaster, bad podcaster. That that's a, that's a uh, script that we that, I think it'd be fun. Yeah, that could be pretty fun. I think it'd be a fun one. Like you like trying to plead with somebody, be just being a fucking asshole at all times. <laughs> <laughs> See if it works. Okay, maybe we'll have a a skit coming out sometime. That sounds really fucking funny. But uh, thanks for stopping by, hanging out with us. Uh, we got one more in the. What this is the third book? Yeah, third book. Three of seven. Before we move on to probably my favorite book, if I'm not including the Gunslinger, so. We had a great time. I, I love these next like 200, 300 pages we get between these two books. It's amazing. Can't wait. I've been looking forward to this since we started the Gunslinger. So, hell yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's really good. I really, I really enjoy it. So, uh, you guys are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Go and rate, rank us five stars. Then you can like leave comments or ask questions and shit on it now. So, interact with us any way you can. I am a loser and I check my phone more than I should. So, if you interact with us, I'm going to interact back. You have a direct conversation with me, this guy right here, this ugly mug, all right? But uh, until next time, oh, what are they, uh, long days and pleasant nights. <laughs> I think that's what my <laughs> Dark Tower fly was. What, say. <laughs> what do we say? Catch you later. See you. Bye. Toodles. Deuces. <laughs>